Hi, and welcome to Something to Talk About. I'm Linda McNamee, and for the next hour, we are going to learn about some local history with our local historian, who is also the town historian. Am I? I don't know. Are you? I don't. Well, there's well, more. we'll find out later. Hold on. <laughs> there, 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 wait, there's more. We have to get rid of all the administrative work first. We are live this evening, so if you have a question for our wonderful guest, whom you will meet moment momentarily, you can always give us a call at 781 two seven zero nine one nine nine or if you think about it afterwards or you have a suggestion for a future topic you can always email me at talk at bcattv.org and as usual I would like to thank all of the crew for this evening who willingly give up their Wednesday evenings to come help me out we have Chris Flaherty who is a staff member here and make sure that all of us volunteers behave ourselves. Thank you, Chris. We have Colleen Moore, Jolie Atwood, Liz Gillespie, and Stephanie Floridas. So thank you, everyone, for giving up your Wednesday evening to come and learn a little bit of history and have fun while we're at it. And last but definitely not least, I would like to thank my husband, Paul, for staying home for Daddy Date Night. Hope you're having fun with the little munchkins. Love you guys. Now, on to our business. I would like to introduce my wonderful guest for this evening, local historian, Mike Trudeau. Did I pronounce that right? Yep. Yes. Okay. You scared me before the show with, when you're spelling out the email. Mm. I'm like, no. So welcome. Okay. And oh, you, you also have your show, so we're doing a crossover. Mm -hmm. And I understand uh, I was on earlier today. I guess My show so. was on a couple of hours ago. What time is your show on? I don't know. You don't know your don't show? I just made oh. Okay. So anyway, uh, other than being an okay. avid historian, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where you grew up. Did you grow up in Burlington? Mm. How you decided to become interested in history? Because I really was never into history. So, you know, the fact that you're interested just kind of blows my mind. And let's see what goes from there. Okay. Well, the... Uh the family joke is, I was born in the deep south, Providence, Rhode Island, <laughs> about as far south as you can get in New England without getting your feet wet, and uh, grew up in my dad's uh, hometown of Milford, Massachusetts, Okay. and uh, that lasted until 1964, then I moved to Medfield. Medfield? Medfield. Okay. Uh, just north of Walpole, okay. and then uh, graduated high school in 1967. And in those days, Uncle Sam had a deal for guys my age that we just couldn't say no to. So I did a stint in the Army. Excellent. And uh, along the way, I met my lovely bride, Dina. And uh, after I got out of the Army, we moved back here. Uh, here we to Burlington? To Massachusetts. To Massachusetts, okay. Lived in Waltham okay. for several years. And then we had a couple of uh, babies of our own. And our home in Waltham, we loved it dearly, and it had no lot, oh. no place for children to play. It was a busy street, and we went looking for some place friendly Elsewhere. that uh, children could and grow up in. And you found Burlington. I found Burlington. Yeah. Yay, and it's still a very happy, and cheerful, really family-friendly place. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, my, my wife and I have been rebuilding our home, uh, new siding, new roof. My brother came over and said, what are you guys, moving? I said, no, I don't think we're ever going to move. No. As long as we can uh, manage it. Heck, my friends <clears> told <throat> me when we moved into the house that I wasn't allowed to move ever again, so, <laughs> so we're stuck. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, we're, we, I've, uh, my wife is joking that I've become a townie, but uh, how did I become interested in it? I think I've always been interested in history. And I've got a little frog in my throat, so uh -oh. let's take care of that. That's not good this early. <clears throat> it's one of the problems that I do most of my work at a computer by myself talking to no one. So yeah, just if things go wrong, forgive me. Anyway, where things really got kicking. Um, okay. Professionally, I've worked as a photographer okay. for quite some time. When the photography business was petering out, I went into something uh, completely, completely different. different. Yes, I went into research and development in electronic engineering. 
Of course, what a <clears throat> logical progression. Exactly. So I went uh, and I was a senior engineering technician in research and development in hardware, and then the hardware bubble burst. And all of a sudden, I was afloat and looking, well, what goes on now? And one of the things that happened here in Burlington was the, well, the bicentennial of the town to begin okay. with, but the uh, Vietnam Veterans uh, Moving Wall Memorial. Oh. When that came to the yeah. uh, Bo Burlington Common, I got involved with that with uh, Bob Hogan and uh, the rest of the veterans and veterans office. And I got quite a bit involved with that. I am a Vietnam veteran, so that was near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. And after that, uh, my wife pointed out there is a Burlington Historical Society. Oh, okay. And so I went and I joined the society. And while working, well, while attending meetings there, I found out that the Burlington Historical Commission, we'll get into okay. that in a moment, Yes. Uh, was expanding. They were going from five voting members to seven, and they were looking for new members. Oh, And okay. so I applied, and I got that. So it's an application process. It's not an elected position? Or it was is not it? elected, no. Okay. Okay. I didn't um, know there was a difference between the society and the commission, so I'm glad you were clarifying this. Okay. This, the biggest difference, okay, little history on that. Digress. Why not? 1964. Uh, it was discovered that a building over at the corner of Bedford Street and Francis, Francis Wyman Road was about to be demolished to have a house put in. Is that where the West School is? That is the West School. Okay. And uh, uh, Charlie Casasa, uh, who was one of the neighbors, remembered that it was at one time a uh, one-room schoolhouse. Oh. And he raised... Uh, so it's uh, probably uh, not in great condition. And it was being used as a garage. Of course. Of course. And uh, Notice sarcasm. No, okay. I get that. Okay. As a matter of fact, there are still uh, oil stains on the floor. Mm. That's all right. But uh, Charlie got together with uh, some of his friends and neighbors, and they formed the Burlington Historical Society to got save it. the West School. Oh, they okay. took out a mortgage. They purchased the. Wow. They purchased the property, and they rebuilt it the way it was originally as a one-room schoolhouse. They did such a good job that today it's on the uh, National Historic Register. Wow, cool. So it is virtually identical to wow. when it was built uh, while George Washington was Now president. how did they know what it was, was there enough left there? That there they was could enough left of it. As a matter of fact, the or original the blackboards are still on the wall. There were photographs okay. of the place and they matched those. And it was a fairly basic design. A lot of the buildings uh, come with a standard design. They're almost cookie cutters. Okay. Uh, you don't. A little salt you, box. Yeah. Style. You don't have architects. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you stay with a design, a design that works. You just go with it. There were four, uh, originally four one-room schoolhouses, in Burlington. Okay. Two of them, two of the buildings still exist. One is a private home. Oh. And one is the West School. Okay. Okay. So the society was formed to save the West School. Okay. Once it was restored, once it was ready, the society wanted to donate it to the town. Well, that was very kind of them. And the town realized they had no mechanism to accept the gift. Oh. They okay. had no way to accept uh, historical property. So the. Didn't uh, know there were rules about accepting. There were, oh. Okay. There are rules about it. And there are, as a matter of fact, state bylaws okay. of what a historical commission should be. Uh, and okay. so the historical commission was formed. Same personnel. Charlie Casasa, okay. Elizabeth... Uh, so they just wore different hats. Right. You know, okay. uh, Paul, a yeah, Paul Amaral. I can't remember. I'm a little bit dyslexic, which is why I tend to okay. write notes on everything. Uh, they put together the commission to okay. accept this property. Uh, it was based strictly on the same rules that are with the State Historical Commission. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the Historical Society still exists. Okay. Uh, they're a social organization. Anyone is welcome to join. The 
The uh, yearly dues are quite modest. They meet uh, 10 times a year. Okay. Uh, take July and August off and uh, have a uh, Christmas potluck dinner and guest speakers, uh, field trips, that sort of thing. Now, the commission, on the other hand, is, is not anyone can Government can join. entity. Kind it of. is. Okay. Uh, there are seven voting members, four alternates. Uh, okay. We have an open meeting. Uh, the again, we also meet ten times a year. We don't meet uh, July and August, but we meet at Grandview. It's an open meeting. Anyone is uh, invited oh. to attend. Okay. If you have something to say, just can't vote. Can't <laughs> vote. Um, the members of the commission are appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Okay. So you apply for uh, to become a member. You are appointed. Uh, once you're appointed, we have found, the only way a member can be removed is by death, resignation, or if uh, there was a public hearing to have them removed for a cause. Ooh. So nobody can just yeah, come I in. Yeah, kind of like plan B on that one. Yeah. That's generally the way things okay. work. As a matter of fact, we've had a resignation this last uh, last month. Okay. So we have an opening. <gasps> so we're going to be looking for at least one new member okay. uh, come fall. Now, would you upgrade an alternate and then replace the new one, or once again, that is appointed by the ah. board of selectmen. Okay. And it's can be political. Okay. The, I won't uh, ask any questions because then I. Right. You the commission have to kill can me, make so. all the recommendations w we want, oh. and our recommendations are taken very seriously. Oh. But the final, okay. uh, the final appointment is made by the board of selectmen. Got it. So. Okay. Um, and there it is. So you have the two separate organizations. Okay. The commission, uh, our charter is for historical education. Okay. and for preservation of historic properties. Okay, so can we go into that a little bit more? Sure. Yeah, I'm not really following my list, but yeah. education, you had mentioned earlier that there are programs with the third grades third in the graders, elementary school? Third um, graders, every year, I believe it's state law actually, that uh, third graders, oh. as part of their curriculum, okay. have to be taught about their local history. Okay. And so every class uh, takes a day and they do a tour of some of our historical properties, mm. depending on weather and depending on what we go. We do the um, the common, pointing out the General Walker House, oh, okay. you know, where the old blacksmith shop was, Grandview, uh, Grandview Farm. Okay. Uh, we go through the museum, the West School, and if uh, time permits, uh, Francis Wyman House. Wow, okay. So it's quite uh, quite something. That's pretty cool. And uh, let's see, preservation, <sighs> that's hard. <laughs> that's one of the, pretty challenging. One of the questions you'd send me was, what are our historical properties yes. in town? And just to give you the idea, I brought this along. This is the uh, Historic Preservation uh -huh. Survey of Burlington, phase one. Phase one, how many this phases are there? from 1999 for the bicentennial. This was commissioned. Oh, wow. And this was our historic property. Thud. It is way out of date. A lot of the properties that are in there are gone. Wow. They've so what's lost. left? We have the West School. Well, we have the West School, the Francis Wyman House. Okay, on the historic register. Okay. Is, okay, uh, well, let's back up a second. What's the historic register? The historic register is a register from the United States government. From the So uh, it's a national thing. It is a national register. Uh, you have to meet a criteria. This is part of it. Uh, it is surveyed. The historical background is checked. A building has to have historical significance to its community. Okay. Okay. Any old uh, building just Doesn't could be work. just any old building. Okay. But if it has political or historical significance or societal okay. significance, then it can be... Uh, so would the West School qualify? It qualifies. And it's on the register. And it is on the register. The museum is on the register. Oh, okay. The uh, UCC Church, the old meeting house, okay. and the Francis Wyman House are all on, on the, the register. register. Oh, so okay. that is it. That's our five, that's our four, four. Wow. historical properties. Okay, so 
Well, let's talk a little bit about those. Okay. So we already talked a little bit about the West School okay. and how it was preserved, and that was the establishment of the Historical Society. Yes. And third graders may or may not visit it. No, they, they will get to the they West School. They will get to the West School. It is the Francis Wyman House that probably okay. will not. Right. Um, as we, we were talking off air, uh, the Francis Wyman House is not owned by the town. It is private okay. property. It's owned by the Francis Wyman Association. Oh, okay. It is, uh, depending on how you look at it, again. Okay. Uh, two sides to every story. Two sides, and our stories can get kind of fuzzy. We'll get into that oh, in just a moment. Okay. Uh, the foundation of the Francis Wyman House is the oldest part of the homestead in town. Oh, okay. Okay. The Cutler House, just What's off uh, Mill Street, okay. as it stands, is probably the the oldest home in Burlington. Oh, okay. It dates to 1720 or earlier. Okay. Records, again, are a little fuzzy. The Francis Wyman House, as it stands, okay. is probably dates to 1720 to 1730. Oh, Somewhere okay. in that so vicinity. So Cutler House just... Just edges it out. Now the, but the foundation the is The foundation older. is definitely. So does that mean like they the rebuilt? Yes. The, uh, okay. the original uh, Francis Wyman House would have been two rooms. Okay. It's called Hall and Parlor. It would have been over the present foundation, which is only in the front of the house. There's no uh, mm -hmm. basement in the, the okay. rear of the house. Does that mean that the original foundation is the size of the original house? Yes. Okay. And... Uh, the the home was rebuilt at least twice. Okay. Between and we're not sure of the date there either. Ish. Between approx we know there was a home there in sixteen sixty six. Okay. Okay, so officially they had their three hundred and fiftieth birthday last year. Okay. But it could have been there as early as uh sixteen fifty eight. Okay. How is that? Better well, to err on the side of caution. It is a complicated story. Okay. And let me just... So we'll have to do a sequel on that one. Okay. I'm going to just digress here a little bit. That's why we so, have the notes because so we, like we like tangents. So I can tell you why things are so fuzzy. Okay. Okay. Uh, the original parsonage for the, the old meeting house, what okay. is now the Congregational Church, was... Basically, town hall. Uh, it, it was the center of town. The meeting house. It was meeting house. Well, the meeting house was the meeting house, but the parsonage where the minister lived, and in colonial times, the minister was the most important citizen in town. Okay. No such thing as separation of church and state. The church was the state. Right. The minister uh, was the highest ranking, most important person. Uh, the congregation, which was also the basis of town meeting, ran things, but as an individual, the minister was the most important. Most historical records for Burlington were kept in the parsonage, what it was known as, what has become known as the Sewell House. Okay. Now this is the house that's on the town seal today. Got okay. it, okay. And that was. Does it still exist? No. Okay. There, therein lies the rub. The, okay. The first town hall was built on Simons Park okay. on the hill where the baseball diamond is now. Oh, okay. okay. That was built around 1844, I believe. And before that, the parsonage was the town hall. Okay. Then there was an actual town hall. 1897, the Sewell House burned to the ground. Ooh. And it took almost every primary historical record of Burlington with it. As what was fires often do, unfortunately. Right. What was left over was in the town hall when it burned to the ground in 1902. <laughs> so within five years, there were two devastating fires that just wiped out almost all the primary records wow. of Burlington. Now, Ed Fogelberg, who I unblushingly call the patron saint of Burlington history, has recreated most of this history from secondary sources. Wow, okay. But again, some of it secondary is a little, sources, yeah. it's a little hazy. 
Okay. So sometimes we speak in generalities. Okay. And we can't nail things. Circa. <laughs> circa. About. It's our new favorite we, word. About, we think maybe, uh, and it's, um, as I was speaking earlier, the there are things that I have theories about that I cannot prove because the records are gone. Mm. So we deal with that as we deal with it. Makes so. sense. So the West School, yep. as we were talking earlier, mm -hmm. has an upcoming event. Yep. Kind um, of. Let's get that in. We can well, mention it later. Uh, it is, people will ask, when is the West School open? I will tell you, it's open on Halloween. Okay, like during the day, just nope. at night? at trick-or-treat time. Oh. We go, and if uh, if the time allows, we go to the arts, uh, the art classes in the different elementary schools, and we get works of art from the students, and Ooh. we decorate the inside of the West School with them. Cool. And then everyone's invited to come to the West School for Halloween. Sweet, like six to eight-ish? Uh, yep. Because right I know last Halloween there was a little debate about when officially is trick or treating. Well, so. Yeah. so do they get to like trick or treat, or is it sure, just like an we, open we tour? Will, we will have uh, candies, we have uh, uh, munchkins, cider, that sort of thing. Come munchkins on in in costumes. Munchkins. Hopefully, we'll we'll have costumes also, and you can see a colonial one screw one room mm, schoolhouse. School and you said there were originally four. There were originally four. There was a north. And this is the only one left right. as a school. Right. This was okay. built also where the town hall went later. This this building was actually built on Simons Park where the baseball diamond is. It was the center okay. school. But then the people of Havenville, okay. where it is now, all the families around there were named Haven. Hmm. Ergo, Havenville. They had a lot of children down there and no school. And they said, oh, okay. what are we going to do? We need a school. They picked it up and they moved it down to its present location. <gasps> okay. They they didn't have any utility poles to get around, so they moved things around a lot. It was a little easier. Mm -hmm. And it's a little smaller than... Yeah, it was a fairly even, easy move. That still exists. Although, what year was that? Because... That was about 1840. You can't really load it on a flatbed truck. and just No. Nope. Okay. You put it onto a flatbed cart hauled by oxen, and I think the oxen may have been in the back trying to slow it down going down mm, that hill. Yeah. <clears throat> because uh, from Simons Park, all directions are downhill. You're right. That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but you had also mentioned about hopefully someday planning like a lantern walk. A lantern walk. Um, one of the commission members, Kathy Horton, is planning lantern walks for two days this fall. At dusk that sounds really, really to cool. Go, to go around the common and into the colonial graveyard Ooh. and look things up at dusk with the lanterns. And kind of creepy. Let me get the date on that. But cool. <laughs> we'll get some uh, get some publicity out on that as the date gets closer. Right now we have it set for September 19th okay. and October 7th. One of those mm -hmm. is a Wednesday, I believe. The other is a Saturday. Perfect. But that's a dusk. That's pretty cool. Because I think they do like those down at like Plymouth Plantation and stuff. Mm -hmm. But now you don't have to go that far. Yep. We've done these before and they were quite popular. That's pretty cool. So we have the little lanterns and little battery operated jobs, but that's okay. And that uh, works. We can point and see. That's right. And the blacksmith shop was right there. And hmm. okay. that used to be. Oh, so many things happened right in that area. Okay, so since we're talking about that area, the museum is located across from Simons Park. Yes. Now, what? tell us a little bit more about that, because I don't think it was always a museum. No, it was the second center school. Okay, so after they moved the first one. Right, then, they, the, then the people the, of the area said, what about our children? So did they build it there, or did they build it and move it? No, the, the center school... Uh, the second center school second was built center school. right there with, as the museum. Uh, okay. It was the same size, same shape, and all the rest of this. Hmm. And it operated as um, the center school with the four other schools around until I believe it was 1897. Now, 1897, okay. it became the fashion uh, to have only one 
school in town, get everybody into the same school. Oh, okay. And so they built what was called the Union School, today's police department. Oh. Okay. So that was built as the center school, and they closed down the other five schools. Now the, uh, the center school, what is now the museum, reopened almost immediately as the town library. Mm, okay. And it operated cool. as a library okay. until the 1960s. Then okay. it was the police station. Okay. Yep. And was the police station still the school? Um, still a school? N uh, at that time, I think it <laughs> might have been. I think I'm going to need, like, you know, a little map, an can't interactive tell, map of Burlington with little buildings. can't tell one player from another without a program. Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which is why I keep all these notes. Uh, I'm not sure if the, when it's the Union School stopped being a the, school. Okay. Uh, but the but the police station school center school two was then the library and then the police station. Right, and then there was Oof. a fire in the police station. Okay. Okay. What happened? Well, it depends on who you ask. Of course, it does. If you ask the police <laughs> department, they will tell you that some discrimination disgruntled young person who uh, hated the man because of the v ongoing Vietnam War uh, threw a firebomb in through the side window. Oh. If you ask Kirby Crawford or Al Fay or the firemen that were there, they will say it was a space heater that uh, caught fire. But the official story is there was a firebomb. That's oh, the story. Oh, we're okay. sticking with it. We're sticking with it. And as soon as the place was burned out, it was turned over to the Historical Commission to do something with it. And Elizabeth... Here, here's this old condemned building. Do something with it. Right. So Elizabeth Lothar okay. had the idea to turn it into the museum. And so uh, it was repaired, put back into condition, and it's been the museum ever since. That was 1974, I believe. Mm, okay. So... Now, how would someone go about visiting said museum? Uh, right now... We've been experimenting having open houses during the summer. Now the oh. Wyman House, ha for the last few years, okay. has been opened up on the second Saturday of each month from May through August. Okay. We w were working the same schedule. We started okay. opening up so we could double Because the up. Wyman House is owned by a different entity. They are owned by the Francis Wyman Association. Okay. It's uh, privately owned. Uh, the museum is owned by the town of Burlington. It is a, it is a town facility. Okay. Uh, it's, the museum is operated, operate, uh, the exhibits are operated by the Historical Commission. Okay. Uh, but the building itself is owned and maintained by the town. Got it. But we can double up our publicity. We can uh, put in the ad saying, open house, museum, Francis Wyman House, it builds it up, and we've gotten much, much better response Excellent. getting uh, visitors. We've had many times where we tried opening, for example, when there were the concerts on the common. Yeah. We'd open, we'd put out the sign, we'd sit, we'd watch the people enjoying the common uh, concerts on the common. <laughs> From across the, the street. sign, shut the door, and go home. Yeah. Because we just Everybody's weren't watching the concert. Right. Okay. Other times, we'd uh, had it open Saturday mornings, say from 10 till noon. Put out the sign, uh, watch traffic go by, take in the sign, close the doors and go home. And nobody would come in. Okay. The biggest problem we have there is parking. It is very... Or lack thereof. Right. There's very difficult to park in that area. Okay. But getting the publicity going has helped. Okay. And um, we have done... Last year, for example, we did a town-wide open house. We mm -hmm. opened up opened at the same time the Grand, Grandview Farm, the Museum, the West School, and the Francis Wyman House, all at, uh, and the Congregational Church, okay. all at once. Wow. We got tremendous response to that. With the one building open, not so much. Yeah. When you get multiples opened, you can get a lot more enthusiasm. Get your little passport, and you get a little stamp in your passport. <laughs> That's a good idea. That, I think, was the basis for one of the questions you had about the uh, oh, the walk? No, the historic trail. The, historic the heritage trail. trail. Yes. 
the Burlington's Heritage Trail, which was put together by the... Uh, Historical Society? No. No. The uh, Garden Club. The Garden Club? Yep. Because that makes so much sense. Of course. Well, thank you, Garden Club. And uh, that was it. That was first laid out in uh, 1976. We don't do an official tour of that, although we uh, have from time to time. But looking at this very quickly, one, still some of all two, the three, uh, four, five. Five of the ten are privately owned. Oh, uh, so you kind of put a damper on things. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of hard to put things together. Okay, so you mentioned Marion Tavern. Mm-hmm. And Marriage. Grandview Farm. Yes. What's the difference, you might ask? I, I was going to ask that. Well, well I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Back around uh, 1834, Abner Marion uh, took his bride here to Burlington, and he moved into a small, uh, what's called a Greek revival house. Okay. And this was right where Marion Tavern, all the rest is. Okay. And uh, he was an ambitious young man. And he wanted to build his business up. So he noticed that there was a stagecoach that went by okay. his front door every day. Every day. Like <laughs> clockwork. Like clockwork. And those were days when the farmers of New England were putting together what are called connected farm complexes. Mm -hmm. Or, I'm going to say it, you can laugh, but it's real. It's known as the big house, little house, back house, barn style of architecture. What they did was they started taking That buildings. makes sense. They took I think I've seen some of those houses. And they started joining them Connecting together. Them. So big house, little house. Back house, barn. Back house, barn. Okay. So with the... I always missed the back house part, but I, I knew the... Continue. This one doesn't really have a back house. What it had was the uh, Greek Revival style house. Okay. And then... Abner purchased some of the property of Solomon Trull. Solomon Trull owned uh, two, two salt box houses and the blacksmith shop. Blacksmith okay. shop was right there where the common is now on the corner of Bedford and, uh, and Center Streets. Okay. Okay. So he owned all that property. He was, actually he passed away uh, and Abner Marion purchased his property. He took one of the salt box houses which stood approximately where the uh, police station is now, Okay. picked it up, moved it over, and joined it to his... Uh, I love the way they just like pick up these little houses and, and move them. And he picked it up, you know, chimney like stack and all. And that is wow. one massive chimney stack. Picked it up, moved it over, joined the two houses together. Okay. And those two houses uh, are the main house of Grandview Farm today. Okay. Okay? Now, he had a small... 30 by 40 foot barn. Okay. And he built a much bigger barn around it. That way he, of could, course. he could keep using the small barn while the big one oh. was being built. When okay. the big one was finished being built, they took off the roof and the siding of that building and just integrated it into the big barn. Of and then course. they built a smaller barn at a right angle to it, oh. which is where the small barn area is now okay and then they connected that whole thing with what's called an l between the barn and the house got it okay okay and then later on they added on this uh storage area to the side where the historical commission now has a office slash storage room okay okay but the uh oh the contractors uh dubbed the dog house so the doghouse is our, our office, and you can okay. walk. When the big barn was there, the big barn had fallen into complete disrepair, mm. and it was disassembled, and it's gone. Okay. There was no salvaging. But you could have walked from the doghouse all the way through to the second story of the big barn. The big barn was like 50 by 80 feet. Wow. It was a huge, Hence huge the building. name Big Big Barn. barn. And okay. uh, this was uh, the Marion Tavern. It was a tavern. It was a stagecoach stop. Stagecoaches could pull in. Into the barn. They could pull in. They could swat, switch horses. Oh. The passengers and the driver could come in, refresh themselves in the area known as the tap room uh, while they were swapping out horses, and away they went. And they operated that from 1840 to about 1850. 
Hmm. Only 10 years. And the stagecoach went from Boston to Lowell? Uh, actually, it went further than that. Oh. It okay. went all the way to Concord, New Hampshire. Wow. Okay. Because a little more. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Wait, wait, there's more. What we now call Center Street. Okay. At that time was Main Street. Okay. Okay. What is Cambridge Street towards uh, the school, the, the high school and the rest. Mm -hmm. That was just a couple of back uh, one, you know. Oh. Okay. One lane farm dirt rooms. Yeah. They were farm lanes. The main route was actually what is now Camp uh, Center, Center Street. Center Street. Oh. Okay. So that was the main, that was like Route 93 of uh, the early 19th yeah. century. Okay. Then somebody invented the steam railroad. <gasps> How dare they? How dare they? The railroad did not come through Burlington, there were too many hills. Okay. And it followed the path of the old Middlesex Canal, which went through Wilmington. Oh. So it bypassed. The okay. stagecoach went out of business. Mm. And Abner Marion was left with nothing, the poor baby. He had nothing except all the land between present-day Wynn Street, Lexington Street, Bedford Street, Burlington Mall Road. Oh. He owned all of that. Where we're sitting now was part of what became Grandview Farm. So I guess he had to start farming again. He had to start farming again. <sighs> and he didn't last much longer. He died at about 1858. Oh, wow. He was okay. only about 50 years old when he died. Uh, well, life yeah. expectancy, you know, 200 years ago was probably yeah. 50, 60. Yeah. And uh, Charles McIntyre uh, okay. purchased the land from his widow. Okay. And he, he is the one who named it Grandview Farm. Oh, okay. And he called it that because... As Mr. Vogelberg would point out, and we actually have an etching to show that from that area, you could see Mount Monadnock to the north, and wow. you could see Mount Wachusett to the west. Wow. From Simons Park, you should have been able to see Boston. But should. farming stopped. Oh, okay. Farming stopped, and the trees grew. It was no longer just yeah. empty. It was no longer plowed fields. Trees are good. Trees are good. Trees are good. There are more trees in Massachusetts today than at the time of the Revolution. Hmm. Nice statistic. That I did not know There's that. a lot of uh, environmentalists who will say, but it's new growth forest. It doesn't count. Well, maybe it doesn't count, but there's still trees. So at one time you could see Mount Monadnock, Mount Wachusett, and now you can see the trees nearby. And that's as far as you can see. Okay. I mean, if you were to get to the top of the water tower, nearby. Yeah. You'd still be able to see it. Okay, because it's taller than it's the trees. It's taller than the trees. I get it. So, uh, Grandview Farm, again, it had a grand view. There you go. Uh, Charles McIntyre was the squash king. He grew squash. He I was wondering what the crops were around here. For him, it was, uh, it was squash. They grew melons. Um, many, many things. Earlier on, the, uh, the Wymans, way back, grew flax. To make linen. Oh, cool. So okay. This was, as a matter of yeah, fact, Lowell's big in textiles, so that would right. probably make sense. And this was 150 or more years before Percival Lowell put in his uh, mills, wow. because he was uh, doing, I think he was uh, doing cotton, which oh. had to be imported from, uh, from the south, oh, okay. because. Cotton doesn't grow cotton, around here. That's where cotton grew. Right. Okay. So let's get back to the town. Or did you have anything else to add about Grandview for Grandview? right now? No, we can move on. Okay, we can move on. Now we mentioned the town hall mm -hmm. halls. Yes, town halls. Okay, so where our story last... When last we left it. Yeah, exactly. The town hall, the original town hall, was had burned Simon's down. at Simon's Park. Yes. And then, okay. And it burned to the ground. Okay. And so the selectmen put their offices into the Union School. The tax offices were in what is now a closet in the Congregational Church. Okay. Uh, town meetings were held in the Congregational Church in the, in the meeting house. house. Um, it took over uh, a lot of the functions of the town there. The next town hall was not built until... My, I'm getting. I'm not. I'm not sure. It was 1914 or 1917. Okay. Okay. So that was built 
where the present town hall is. Okay. Okay. But was it? Is it the present building? No. No. Okay. That that was the second town hall. Okay. Um, and it was torn down, I believe, in the 1960s. Okay. And then the present town hall was built on that site then. Okay. And that was the site earlier of the Wood Tavern. Oh. A lot of taverns. We had a lot of taverns. Oh yeah. You go wow. back to uh, go back to colonial times. Nobody drank water. Drinking water was dangerous. Well, true. They hadn't heard of uh, sanitation. They didn't know what. Uh, you just had to drink ale. And that because ale was safe. They didn't realize it's because you boiled the water before you put it into the uh, mix. Minor technicality. Right. So they learned after a while. Okay. So wait, let's back up again. Mm -hmm. So the town hall is where it was. Right. And the town hall annex, when did that show up? True. Not exactly sure. Uh, it would have to be probably in the 1970s. Okay. Because I'm a transplant, so I only showed up like, you I've, know, this millennia. Well, as <laughs> I said, I've, uh, I'm have i a newcomer to town. I've only been here for 33 some odd years. Okay. And uh, it was, the annex was there, and that was the police station when I got uh, to town. Okay. Because it's right next to the fire station. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, the police obviously outgrew that. Okay, when did the police station move back to the I, Union School? I couldn't give you a date okay. of exactly when. It's 20 years or so now. Okay. It, it's been a while. So fairly recent. Fairly recent. Yeah, I mean, bro. When you're my age, 20 years ago feels like yesterday. I understand. I've got a granddaughter who's 14, and it's like, what? When did that How happen? did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> my daughter had a daughter. <laughs> my goodness. My baby. Okay. Um, now, looking at, I, in kind of getting in the right mindset, I was actually looking at the Historical, Co Historical Society's website. Mm -hmm. And they had something listed called the John Walker House. General John, General John Walker. Walker. Yeah. Who was he? General John was... Um, and is his house still around? His house is still around. Okay. It is today an insurance company. Just, well, do you know where the barn is next to A.J. Rose? Yes. That's the Walker Barn. Oh. And the house right next to it on... Uh, right next to the post on, office? On, yes, on Bedford Street. That is the Walker House. Oh. And, um, and who was he? John Walker was part of the Walker family, obviously. And they go way back. He was a general. As a matter of fact, a general. I went looking it up. It's not, I mean, uh, his father um, was a soldier during the French and Indian Wars. Mm -hmm. The both of them fought in the Revolutionary War. And what I have is, oh, I had to look it up. So when did he become a general after all? And he became a general in 1798. Oh, War okay. was over. He was appointed by President John Adams as a major general hmm. to command an army being formed at Oxford to defend New England against possible attack from the French. Okay. Okay. There was I thought we were friends with the French at that point. Well, but we didn't I guess and forth. not. Yeah, if you look at the ABC uh, uh, problems, there was a lot of bribery going on. You know, millions for defense, not one cent for tribute. That comes from that time. Uh, okay. And. America, the United States at that time, was really looked on with scorn by mm. the Europeans. And these upstarts, we, we just kick them aside. Britain didn't get over uh, losing the colonies until about the time of the American Civil War. Wow. Okay. I mean, they they the held war, a grudge. They held a grudge. Okay. Uh, war of 1812 could be uh, Revolutionary War Part Two when the British came back and said, oh, we want to do this over again. Yeah. Well, they did. Uh, okay. So, and, uh, so General John, uh, he was noted, he was a veteran, he was a noted personality, and his son, James Walker, was educated at that same one-room schoolhouse that became the West School before it moved down the street. And he taught there for a little while, then okay. he moved on, uh, he went, and he became uh, president of Harvard College. Wow. So James Walker, um, they 
did a good job in those little one-room schoolhouses. I guess so. So he was, he was president of Harvard from 1853 uh, to 1860. Wow. I had to resign because of ill health. Ah. But. Uh, but he resigned. He resigned. He wasn't kicked Plan out. Plan B. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. What about the old burying ground? I've walked Bur by it. That oh. seems pretty old. Hence yeah, the name. Mm-hmm. The old burial ground was, okay. It's a man named uh, Benjamin Johnson. He was also known as Sergeant Johnson. Okay. Well, he always liked being called Sergeant. Nobody's sure why. But he built what became known as the Sewell House. Okay. What we talked about earlier. He also gave he also owned the land in the area called Forest Field. Okay, what's Forest Field? Forest Field is the area uh, where the Simons Park area where the baseball diamond is, okay. where the uh, congregational church is now, okay. and where the burial ground is. Oh, okay. okay, and according there to there wasn't the a Bedford Street, so it just <coughs> okay. It looked a lot like the far side of the hill does today. Oh, okay. Okay, where the frisbee range is and all those okay. things. So it was a forest all the way across. Oh. Benjamin Johnson owned the whole thing. Wow, whole and kit and caboodle. He donated the land that the church stands on, mm -hmm. and then uh, people die. When people died, they get buried. And they started burying people in this plot of land. Hmm. And okay. finally Johnson had to say, all right, as long as they're burying people there anyway, I'll give that land to the town as the burial ground. I can get a couple of dates here. The earliest. Okay. Um, but they just started burying people there on his land and never asked him? That's think, pretty bold. Well, what are they going to do? Well, yeah, that's true. Uh, well, they could ask. So the oldest, uh, <laughs> as a matter of fact, the oldest okay. one, Maybe a relative of his. Uh, we were doing a, a tour of that uh, this last uh, Sunday as part of the okay. 285th anniversary of the building of the Congregational Church. Okay. The oldest gravestone in there is for a child, a child named Obadiah Johnson, mm. as a matter of fact, who died. Uh, this is um, th this note has it as 1736. The the stone itself says 1739, but uh, oh, Benjamin Johnson finally gave the land in 1769. Okay. So that's when it became the colonial burial ground, um, and it was used up until, actually, um, one of the newest, if you can say so, <laughs> uh, headstones there is uh, for Ruth Wilson, who was a uh, who died in 1871. Oh, wow. But by that time, Chestnut Hill Cemetery was uh, in full swing. Oh, okay. That got going around 1850. Oh, wow. I didn't realize it was that old. Yep. And uh, it was part of a new movement in uh, what was called the cemetery movement. The difference between a burial ground and a cemetery. A burial ground belongs to a church. Oh. Okay? And a cemetery okay. belongs to the whole community. And it's Never really thought about that before. And a burial ground, you know, just bury people. A cemetery is set up to look like a park, oh. a place to go visit, where you could uh, picnic if you want. But uh, <laughs> go if you want. I'm not pick. sure I'm ready for that. I don't know, sometimes it's, it would be a pleasant little, if you, especially if you have to travel some distance. Having a True. nice place to pay re your respects to, uh, to your loved ones is. Uh, it was a, a new way of looking at things in the mid 19th century. Hmm. Okay. Now, did we talk about who Marshall Simons was? No. Well, I think did we? Did we? I know we Let's talked talk about, about him, him again. Off here. Okay. <laughs> Marshall Simons was a man. Uh, part of the Simons family, obviously. Because he's got a school. He's got a park. He he's went got off and he uh, he made a fortune during the gold rush years. Hmm. And he came back to town and uh, he spread the wealth around. He was quite philanthropic. And in his will, he set up a trust. Okay. And the trust still exists Smart and it's man. still dispensing money a hundred some odd years wow. later. And part of the trust's, um, the object of it was to uh, give to the town. 
The area that we now think of as the uh, Burlington Common was not colonial. Hmm. That was a residential area. Yeah, I'm trying to picture that. It's just, you know. If you look at the old maps, you'll see that there are houses all the way around. Okay. And I got a story about one of those in just a minute. Oh, uh, okay. And part of the trust, the trustees were to purchase the land in this area as it became available. Okay. And then clear it out and donate it back to the town to be used as park land. As park. Okay. To be used for it's how the um, I believe that's how the town hall property became available. Oh. Uh, they set up the common. They set up Simon's Park. It's Marshall Simon's Park. Um, he was well thought of enough that they built the town. Uh, they named the, the, the elementary school, school okay. after him, or the middle school. Middle school. Um, but one of the buildings that was on the what is now the common okay. was the uh, it's called the Bennett House. And it was a parsonage. The original parsonage, the the school house burned okay. down. This one was over uh, very near where the town hall is now. Okay. Facing towards the town hall. When the uh, Simons people bought that, they set up to move it. Okay. They were going to move that that home. Because we just like picking up houses and moving them. And you know? what's, what could possibly go what wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Well, I'll tell you what could go wrong. <laughs> They picked up this home. They talked to uh, Mrs. King, the minister's wife, and said, don't bother packing anything. Oh, And no. so she left everything in the house. And they put it up on the trailer, and they car carried it across. And the town... This isn't going to end well. The I town guess. depends on well water. And sometimes wells get closed. And sometimes they get covered over, and you don't know where those wells are. And one of the wheels of this tr uh, of this trailer found a well, oh, no. and it went dunk, and the whole house slid off. <gasps> and just the cat survived, but nothing else did. Everything was destroyed. Cat so, used eight of its nine lives in yeah, that. <laughs> but wow, that w that was it. The, the the house was gone. Oof. And uh, whoops. So the Congregational Church is now working on its uh, third parsonage, which is a nice house, and hopefully no disasters are going to be formed. Don't move it! Just, just leave it alone. Okay, so we talked a lot about historical properties in mm -hmm. Burlington, and it seems that you know Burlington has done a pretty good job holding on to some, some of it. Some things. I'm just you know, thinking about where I grew up, and I don't think there's any... I think there's like three historical properties, and it's a much bigger place. But how is something considered historical? And how do you maintain, or what are the rules to get it registered? You talked about getting, getting it registered. registered. Well, once again, uh, the survey was done by John Goff okay. uh, in uh, 1999, and it's listed the different properties, and it goes into the, their background. Okay. Getting a survey like this, is the first thing. Then you apply. So what do you put in the survey? Just like <clears throat> all buildings or just all historical buildings? All historical and how buildings. old does something have to be to be considered historical? Okay, um, we'll get away from the register. We'll get to the the, uh, the commission and what okay. we can do to preserve something because that's an easier criteria. Okay. Sort of. Uh, sort of. There is a law in, in Burlington, one of the town bylaws, uh, the demolition delay bylaw. This is the only power, if you will, the Historical Commission has towards preserving uh, historical property. And what it is, when a building that is over 100 years old oh, okay. Okay, comes up for demolition. Now, if somebody wants to tear it down, they have to go to the building department and apply for a demolition permit. Uh, okay. When they apply to that, uh, they're gonna, the building department will look up the history of that building. And if it's over 100 years old, okay. then that gets forwarded to the commission. Now the commission okay. will look it over, based on this mostly, okay. to find out uh, whether or not it's worthy of preservation. Now, okay. So in other words, if it's ready to fall down, if you sneeze, that's if not worthy? If it is worthy, a public or? danger. It, yeah. Okay. 
then it's out of our hands. The building, uh, the building inspector, uh, okay. John Clancy, uh, today, for example, okay. would go to a building and say, this is a public health hazard. It cannot stand. Uh, he okay. can condemn it right there. The commission has nothing to say about that. Okay. But if it's... No matter how old it is. Right. Okay. Uh, but if it is uh, viable, okay. then we look into it. And if we find that it has historical, societal, uh, uh, political significance and okay. that's a fairly open I was about definition. to say that's kind of a it, it, it's loose subjective it really is then we can call a public hearing oh, okay. we have to do that within I think uh, two weeks okay we have to notify all the abutters okay. and the uh, person who's put in for the application and we hold a public hearing okay to see whether or not there's an alternative to demolition or okay. if this building should be preserved. Uh, now, okay. if we decide it must be preserved, we can put a six-month demolition delay on that okay. building while alternatives to demolition are examined. Okay. Six months doesn't seem like a long time. A lot of, I hate to say this out loud, but it's not exactly a secret, a lot of developers now just build six months into their plans. They put into it, okay. okay, we put in the six months delay, and they say, okay, six months plus one hour, and the bulldozers move in, and it's gone. Then there are wow. other sneakier things. There was a uh, developer who purchased what was known as the Jotham Johnson House. Mm -hmm. This is on Lexington Street. This is a, uh, Jotham Johnson was a, I think, grandnephew of Benjamin Johnson. Okay. Same neighborhood. Same kind of a house built around 1780. Is that the one that was just restored five, six years ago? It was basically demolished in all but legal name. Oh, uh, okay. They put in for an interior demo. Okay. Tear that up and renovation. And they renovated it to the point where it no longer had a roof. It no longer had walls. The basement, it had four columns, one on each corner, oh, wow. and the rest of the building was gone. John Clancy uh, had himself a little fit, and we stopped to uh, work on everything, and we came in and said, well, what can we do? The building is gone. Yeah. And so things like that happen. Mm -hmm. The one of the old uh, one-room schoolhouses, for example, uh, the, okay. uh, what was it, the uh, East School, which is down near Mountain Road, that uh, was on okay. private property. A guy came in and demolished it. Oh. He didn't ask. He didn't put in for a permit. He, and he just said, I didn't know we had to put in for permits or anything. Yeah, yeah all right. Because right. we would have uh, worked on preserving that one. Yeah, well, you know what? What? We're out of time. We haven't even started talking about the Wymans. <laughs> well, we'll just have to have a sequel then. As Ed Fogelberg would put it, the first family of Burlington. There you go. The All reason right. half this town exists okay. is because of them. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. That was a very quick hour, and I was. was entertained and enlightened and educated by many of your stories. <laughs> and I hope everyone at home enjoyed our conversation as much as I did and hope you are able to come away with a little bit of new knowledge. So thank you very much for tuning in, and I will see you around town. Good night.